Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street. Bill Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. Look at that number. It's growing every single day. I absolutely love it. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button down there. Turn on that little bell notification as well because I love doing these videos on a daily basis, documenting my journey with investing, with cryptos, dividend stocks, grow stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come on this incredible journey. We're just getting started. Things are starting to get a bit crazy out there. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through. It would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people as the YouTube algorithm is absolute magic when you do that. All right. Let's get straight into it. Little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt, especially cryptos. That is why I only invest what I can afford to lose. Yes, we don't like to lose. We can lose money like that, especially in cryptos, all right? So please be careful. Do your own research. Do not take what I say in these videos as financial advice. All right, formalities are out of the way. Yes, it is late afternoon here, nearly 6 p.m. in Melbourne, Australia. Um, it's been a pretty ca crazy day for me here, um, literally my other businesses, and I will do a video on that, um, just sort of giving you an idea of what I do. Um, so it's been pretty crazy here, and I've just, I literally have not had any time to stop. Anyway, enough chit chat, straight to community tab today, and I put a post up, and it's something that has been on my mind for a long time. We're going to read it quickly. The education system is built to make workers, not investors. Imagine schools educated to invest. We spent 20 years in school. Imagine the compound interest, interest over that time. That is facts. I know some of you have commented saying, oh, we need workers. Yes, we need workers. Of course we do. We need people to run the economy. That's just basically how things work. We need that. But aside from that, if we had education in schools about investing in the stock market, cryptos now, I mean, that's that, that would be incredible to teach kids that. But just investing in general, to put some money aside in whatever investment you can, you know, obviously you have stocks or cryptos, to earn some interest and compound interest and to grow that money, it would be incredible. I think a lot of people would be a lot more financially better off later on in life compared to having people with their superannuation fund here in Australia and obviously uh, 401k in the United States. When you think about it, by the time in the next 20 years, you know, your superannuation fund, your 401k, that money's gonna be you know, worth a lot less than what it is now. I mean, think about it. I mean, the amount of inflation that's going on at the moment, cost of living, I don't even know how people can actually live off their superannuation money when they retire. That's only gonna last, you know, probably five years if you're lucky. Anyway, just saying that, that was just my little rant. Uh, what else we got here? XRP is still up 13,000% in all time since its launch, guys. And yes, it's crazy to see that insane percentage right there. Now, I'm going to have a quick flick through CoinSpot, and I won't keep you guys too long on that. And uh, there is a referral link below for CoinSpot. Please feel free to use that. Do your own research. You can get $10 in Bitcoin to get you started. But these prices are all in Australian dollars. I'm just going to look at the main ones that I'm invested in anyway. So you've got Bitcoin down nearly 4% today to 52,000. It has dropped a lot because it is Sunday night in the United States, Monday morning afternoon around Australia. Ethereum is at $3,520 right now. XRP is $1.04. Now I've got some interesting stuff about XRP. Again, I love it. It's my favorite project. But Jeremy Hogan put some interesting tweet up before and I'm going to have a look at that. Luna is at $110. Cardano is $1.13. Solana is $115. AVAX $100. Polkadot $23. I'm going to skip a couple. Polygon Matic $1.97. You've got Crow at $0.53. Cents. Cosmos at $38. Near Protocol $13. Link is at $18. Tron. I've seen a few comments about, you know, in the uh, in the videos, in the comments, sorry about people asking me to do a video on Tron. I will do a video on Tron. Is it eight cents? I am holding a bag of that, which is good. Uh, Algorand is a dollar and two cents right now. Mana, $3.34. All the Metaverse projects are down at the moment, so it's a good entry point. XLM is at 24 cents. Hedera is at 28 cents. You've got FTM at $1.89. Sandbox, $3.90. VeChain, six cents. That is incredibly cheap, by the way, for the utility of that project. Axe Infinity is down to $66. That percentage APY you can earn staking it on CoinSpot is really nice as well. And there's no, no uh, minimum amount you need to have it staked either. Just putting it out there. So you can take it out, put it in whenever you like on CoinSpot. That's why it's incredible. Theta is $3.72. You've got uh, IOTA, Banking Coin, $0.95. Cents. You've got Harmony One at $0.18. Aave, 161 Gala at $0.30. Cents. Neo, $28. Engine, $1.85. 
I'm just saying these prices because I think we're never going to see these again come in the next few years, guys. Oasis, I'm going to look back at these videos. It's going to be incredible. Oasis rose 31 cents. You've got XDC sitting at six cents right now, almost down 6% today. So that's pretty much it for CoinSpot. Now, if I go to the news, let's have a quick, quick look at crypto bubbles. Everything is in the red. I'm not worried at all because some good buying opportunities right now. Obviously, the one that's down the most is Anchor Protocol, 16.9% today. That is a significant drop. This is why I said you need to be careful with these staking platforms. I mean, the last couple of weeks, it's just been up, you know, going crazy, but down 16 percent so that's that's going to hurt a few investors ftm as well is down significantly today uh today it's down 17.6 percent guys and i am invested in ftm as well by the way uh xmr is down uh what else we got here see what i mean by hex unbelievable whenever the market's like full-blown red hex is always up guys that's up like one percent at the moment it's literally the only green coin out there unbelievable but again good buying opportunities between sunday evening and Monday morning here in Australia afternoon. It's a great time to buy and dollar cost average into. Let's have a look at cryptometer.io. You've got a lot of money flowing into DOT right now in the last day. Now, if I go to the, obviously the last hour, just good to see where the money's flowing. XRP, ANC, and Z Zcash, I believe it is. So obviously you've got Ethereum, Bitcoin, USD, uh, UST, Luna, AVAX, Chess, New Protocol as well. And KP3R, I have no idea what that one is anyway. So top five cryptos to watch, Bitcoin, XRP. Now this is interesting coming out of Coin, uh, Coin Telegraph. Sorry, it's late afternoon. Near Protocol, XMR and Waves. I am um, trading that on three commas, by the way. And uh, I've been trading Waves and it was going really, really well for me. Uh, obviously the entire market's down right now. I've got all safety orders um, that have been taken up. So just waiting for that to pick up so my deals can get cashed out there. Why it is vital to see the Ripple lawsuit closely now, guys. So watch watch this case very closely. There's a lot happening here. I'll get into some stuff on Twitter, um, obviously, because Jeremy Hogan put up a, a news clip in there uh, from the, sorry, a document there from the case. It's very fascinating, and it sort of all ties in here. So we'll get into that in a second. But a bigger earthquake than Swift. What the Russia PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard ban means for Bitcoin and crypto amid extreme price swings. We've all seen these prices going absolutely crazy. Yes, they've stopped Visa, MasterCard now, PayPal, and a lot of exchanges in the United States are being you know, pushed to stop transactions uh, in the uh, in Russia, guys. So we'll see what happens here, guys. But you know, credit and debit cards issued in Russian ba by Russian banks will no longer work outside of the country while Russian businesses and cash machines will be unable to accept cards issued from outside the country. This is mega. I mean, like, they've stopped literally all the financial connections here with the, the rest of the world. Like, they've cut them off completely. That's huge, man. Like, I don't know how long they can continue this. Um, you know, who knows? I mean, that's going to be having a major effect on Putin's uh, war chest there for sure. Now, another thing I want to point out is Waves. This is what I've been trading on um, three commas. So we'll look into this in more detail. But Waves is commonly based stack, decentralized open source technologies to build scalable and user-friendly apps. So again, I am trading this right now. Valued lock DeFi is $1.6 billion. Global rank is 59. Daily transactions 31K, 254 million total transactions. So million, that's a lot. Now, this is in relation to ISO 222, guys. I mean, where, where do we stand on the journey to ISO 222? Now, obviously, there's a critical date here in November. And I just want to make that, that point clear. November, right? This is when all of these banking coins are switching over. And, you know, funnily enough, Jeremy Hogan put up a tweet um, in relation to ISO 200, or not ISO, sorry, the settlement to Ripple and the SEC, and I'm gonna get into that now because I just wanna show you guys, this is crazy, right? So check this out here. When will Ripple vs. SEC uh, case end? Ripple thinks it will end sometime between August 26 and November 18. Uh, in its pending class action, Ripple agreed to move the case start back to November 18 in belief that the SEC case will be finished before then. And of course, it can settle any time. Now check this right here. Look at the dates right here. Class certification motion, August 26, November 18. Now, I mean, that's pretty full on right there. November, you've got all of this stuff coming in November. ISO 222 is coming, you know, starting in August and November it goes live. 
I mean, could we be seeing a, a settlement right here, you know, with this case, clear clarification, all done and dusted, everything's gone by November? I think so. I really think so, guys. So due to an overlap of factual and legal issues between the case and the SEC action, the parties agree that there are efficiencies in having certain aspects of the SEC action per, uh, precede certain deadlines in this action. During uh, Doing so will reduce the burden on the parties, streamline discovery in the case, and potentially reduce the burden of the court by narrowing the issues in dispute. So, I'm just saying there, November, ISO 222 November, I don't, that's just, it's all related guys. And it just amazes me as well that all this stuff going on with uh, Mr. Lubin and Ethereum and JPM coin. Oh, it's just incredible, man. Like why haven't they gone after JPM or JP Morgan? They've just targeted Ripple, you know, Ripple's partnered with, oh, sorry, Ethereum's partnered with um, JP Morgan. It's incredible to see that they've gone after their competitors. That's basically the, you know, what I think this has all got come down to. They've gone after their competitors to stop their competitors, Ripple, aka Ripple, right? Unbelievable, guys. So anyway, check this out here. This is from Bill. The letter uh, from the SEC to Ripple's lawyers dated 20th of January, informing the front, uh, for the first time that for the Estabrook notes states that the SEC's litigation team became aware of the notes on 11th of January, but did not receive them until the 14th. Conveniently, the day after the judge's decision on the DPP. Again, unbelievable, guys. I think there's some serious corruption going on right there. Uh, what else we got here? JP Morgan's Ethereum hypocrisy is undeniable. Who cares about corporate banking reputations anymore? Nothing to see here. JP Morgan and the death of corporate reputation. JP Morgan Chase devised manipulative schemes. Nor should we be puzzled by that, that uh, JPM's uh, share price is unaffected by such scandals. JPM is likely to emerge with the tap on the wrist from regulators and civil penalty that is a minimum minimal in comparison to the profits it is making. So only a few decades ago, such offenses would have um, irreparably stained the reputation of a leading Wall Street firm. Now, I just want to point out, this is really interesting, and thanks XRP Crow for this one, man. So so six la of the largest Wall Street banks paid almost $200 billion for settlements, and they continued to run their businesses as usual. But Ripple, one of the most transparent and regulatory proactive fintech companies, was stopped by a corrupt government agency, the SEC. Have a look at this. This is really cool. I mean, not cool, but I mean, it's full on. So Bank of America, so legal actions, right? 86, they copped fines of $93 billion. Citigroup, 79, legal actions, $20 billion in fines. Goldman Sachs, 41, legal actions there. Uh, 17 billion, JP Morgan Chase, 80 fines, $40 billion, Morgan Stanley, 48, uh, you know, legal actions right there, $5 billion, Wells Fargo, 61 legal actions right there, $20 billion. I mean, sanctions and settlements paid dollars. Like, check the amount of money in settlements. I can't believe that. That's crazy to see what's happening. And they're allowed to do whatever they need, you know, they're doing right now, which is continue their business. And they're uh, going after Ripple. Why? Because Ripple is going to change the game. Straight up, they do not like the competition. So anyway, we've got Fear, Fear and Greed Index is down significantly today. I'm not really worried about that. Now, there is a video I want to play with you guys just quickly. So this is in relation to Swift and Ripple and XRP. Have a listen to this. Hard to work here. This is a really key point because Ripple is really at the cutting edge of this. So you guys should all be really proud to work here. You know, 75% of big global banks, especially US ones, are pulling out of the international correspondent banking system. It's just too onerous. The regulatory requirements are too painful and people say, well, it's not worth it. Why should I have a correspondent banking pair with Uganda or Ghana or, you know, Chile? Why should I bother? And so new innovations like the Chinese digital yuan like the big payments platforms in China could take its place. On the US side, what do we have? I mean, if we had national champions in the US, which we don't, of course, Ripple would be it. You know, we could be on the really positive side of this as we start gaining traction. As And I don't have to tell you all because you work here and you help make this happen every single day. This is a real- So 75% of banks uh, pulling out of Swift, and I wonder why, because they're holding a monopoly there, guys. It's crazy stuff. So again, prepare yourselves, I'm telling you. 
Uh, this is an interesting scenario right here from Crypto Insight UK. So thanks for this one. This is a really interesting one. So the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve come out and say that they have been testing their CBDCs on the XRPL private ledger. This is not public, it's private. They're about to make it go live and they're using XRP as a neutral bridge asset uh, to settle cross-border payments. What happens next? Straight up. I mean, you're talking about major, major transactions, guys. This is happening right now. Now, this is in relation to Consensus and Lubin and JPM and JPM Coin. Four months before the lawsuit, Clayton's law firm, Sullivan, Sullivan and Cromwell SC, negotiated to purchase JPM's quorum uh, and the JPM Coin by Lubin and Consensus. It appears that Clayton is helping his firm, directed Hinman to contact Lubin. Very interesting to see what's going on. There's a lot of corrupt stuff here, guys. When interviewed by um, Laura Shin, uh, Lubin described his quorum a question offering and as interbank information uh, network that is similar to what SWIFT does and works with uh, north of 400 financial institutions around the world. He adds that consensus supports JPM coin. Have a listen to this. It sounds very similar to Ripple, right? Have a listen to this. Uh, JP Morgan, I what are they using quorum for? So the publicly announced applications are their interbank information network, which has north of 400 financial institutions around the world. Um, and it is it's essentially a messaging layer, uh, similar to what SWIFT does. Uh, JP Morgan, I believe, has around 4,000 uh, financial institutions in their correspondent banking network. So one could imagine that all of those organizations and perhaps more will eventually end up on IIN. So consensus is uh, supporting uh, that network. Um, and consensus is also supporting JPM coin, which is a, a stable coin solution. So very interesting, man. This is this is full on stuff here. So Lubin's description of quorum JPM coin use case surrounded sounded very similar two and a half years ago. Uh, two, and a half, uh, two and a half years earlier, Brad Garlinghouse described how Ripple was utilizing XRP to disrupt and replace Swift. When Lubin said Ripple and XRP were not competition, just look at the WEF memo. This is the um, the WEF, uh, WEF memo right here, guys. So check this out here. So you can clearly see here examples, JPM, Coin, and XRP, Utility, Settlement, Coin. I mean, it just it's just fascinating to see that ripple was targeted directly by the sec and jpm coin and jp morgan and all of this stuff's coming out now very interesting right here unbelievable it's getting deep guys it's full on anyway i'm not going to get into all that because i'll be here for ages other than that that's pretty much it for the news today that the market is down right now my trading bot here on three commas is down significantly look at that it just dropped even more 1184 and again, all my deals are in the red and I've got safety orders. I've got 15 bots set up at the moment um, and they're all running. Obviously, I'm waiting for the market to come back up. There's a link below to three commas if you wish to start trading on that. Please be careful on there though. Only invest we can afford to lose, clearly. But it's been pretty incredible for me. And uh, let's just have a quick look at the total market cap right now. 1.7 trillion, 42% BTC, 17% Ethereum. All in the red at the moment. Great buying opportunities. Waves is up 0.82%. Again, I am trading that on three commas. XRP is up, which is nice to see that finally back up there. Eunice said, Leah, I've seen this come up so many times. Pax Dollar, Tether, Anchor Protocol is down. I'm not going to go through my entire portfolio, guys, because again, it's going to take me too long. Bitcoin's sitting at $38,000 right now. And again, it has gone below that 40K mark. I'm not really worried about it because it's just, you know, there's plenty of buying opportunities straight up. So you've got XRP sitting at 74 cents right now. And again, all time, 12,000%. Come on, that's an incredible investment. You will never get that anywhere else on the planet, straight up. Uh, Cardano sitting at 81 cents. Matic, $1.42. Near Protocol, $9. Hedera, 20 cents. VeChain, 4 cents. Incredibly cheap. My other ones here, guys, XDC sitting at 4 cents USD. XYO's at one cent, loading the bags with XYO, just building my position in that because it's going to be a big project. Veracity as well. Star Atlas is definitely one that I'm looking at for gaming because I still think that's going to be a massive sector. Now, in terms of the in um, you know the top you know socially talked about cryptos right now, this is a really good app, Lunar Crush. Have a look at it. You've got Mirror Protocol, Chili's, XRP's now at number three. 
Really nice to see that up there, guys. Burger swap. Don't know what that is. I'm staying away from it. Zcash. Strong. You've got Orion Protocol, Wizard X, Met Metis Token, Credo. You've got Dow Maker as well. Uh, Juno Network, Monero, Prot Proton XPR. I am invested in, by the way. I like their payment system, us usernames and stuff. Bitrue Coin, Certic, Woo Network, MX and Hex, and Litecoin. That's pretty much it for today, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Are you buying the dip right now? And uh, really interesting to see what happens with this settlement that now it's all programmed. Everything is coming out in November. So uh, we could be in for a pretty crazy year this year in terms of all the banking coins and all this migration to ISO 222. Very going to be uh, very interesting the next couple of months. Anyway, let's talk about it in the comments. Have a good day. We'll speak to you soon, all right? Cheers. Bye.